Hello and welcome to RGU Talk, the official podcast of Robert Gordon University. I'm your host, Johnny Milne, and this week I'm honoured to say that I'm joined by one of RGU student presidents, president for education and welfare at RGU Union. It's Kerry Harrison. Kerry, welcome to RGU Talk. Thank you. Um, so you've been acting as student president for two years now, am I right? Yes. Uh, what made you want to take that time out as a sabbatical officer? Well, I think I was... I wasn't really sure whether I was going to run or not, um, but I was persuaded. Um, That's always the best way. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. But I think I was, I really wanted to make a difference and especially from the welfare side, I didn't really know much about education uh, and that tends to be the case with my role. People come into this either from the education side or the welfare side. Um, You very rarely get someone who already knows both because they're they're quite separate things. Um, So I came in from the welfare side and that's where my passion lay for for doing this. Um, I've got quite a big passion for education now though um i've got heavily involved with the national work so that's been good and had you been heavily involved in the union or other societies before you ran as president i was uh vice president of the mental well-being society for its first two years um, and i was also with esn the erasmus student network and for anyone who might not know much about your role or the roles of the other officers like yourself Big question, but what's a day in the life of student president look like? Oh, it's um, it it can be very different. Um, I mean, some days you'll like today, for example, I don't have much on, so I don't have many meetings. Um, so I can sit and get through all my emails and all the papers that I still need to read. <laughs> um, other days I will have back to back meetings, which is very stressful because they can often be at other sides of the campus so it's the same as having your lectures at different sides of the campus too um and yeah quite often end up being late for some of those meetings (laughs) because you have to run around but um yeah um a lot of reading a lot of emails a lot of emails and mostly from staff actually Mm -hmm. um the most engagement that i get from students is usually through social media um so yeah that's kind of my day would usually be come in check the emails um my emails will stay up all day um and i'm i'm known for responding extremely fast to emails you, you are indeed yeah yeah a lot of people are like why are we responding so fast um but it's because i keep them up all the time and i prioritize my emails over other stuff so if i'm reading something i will check the email first and respond to that because i think it's really important that we do that and the meetings that you're having across campus, are they with, I mean, predominantly students or like senior managers of the university? Um, or is it, you know, a mix of both? It's generally senior management. Um, the sh- meetings that I have with students are usually stuck in forums. Um, so the student voice forum, um, the rep forums and things like that. That's where my most engagement with students comes from. Um, the meetings I have are usually with senior management or other staff on projects that are ongoing. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's where our meetings come from. And you say walking, you know, to and from across campus. Obviously, walk a lot of walking back and forth, a giant photo of yourself outside your office, outside the student union. That must take some getting used to, right? It does. Um, you end up blanking it out completely. Uh, you just don't see it anymore. Um, yeah. The union actually has two entrances. The back bit isn't near reception. So we. I quite often use the back bit so that I don't have to walk past it, and just I could, cheat. I can imagine, you know, when you're walking past and the students, they do a double take. Absolutely. Which is the real one. It's really strange. Uh, students do quite often, not stop, but they'll walk past me if I'm walking past it and be like, oh, is is that her? And at the moment, you're also on all the plasma screens across campus as well. Yeah, I don't like that. When we were coming down here, we walked past <laughs> a big picture of you again. Um do you find that, speaking, going back to your role, do you find that there's a lot of student interest in representation and engagement with the union? Not hugely, and it really depends uh, on the areas. So different schools have different engagement levels, um, especially with representation in education and kind of 
that kind of thing um so for example creative and cultural business are probably one of the most engaged with the union because Mm -hmm. they've got all the societies that relate to their courses um uh, an example of a course that's maybe not so engaged is engineering school they're not so engaged in the union and their activities um and the reps there i also hear are not too engaged either so um it really depends um and i think all unions have the same issue i wouldn't say that we were unique in that um and you know I, i speak to a lot of unions across scotland especially and it's the same problem that everybody's having so i don't feel like it's necessarily a bad thing for us and for students who be listening to this and may not be necessarily be aware what is involved in the role of a student rep if you're putting yourself forward if you're as was the case when i was a student you are put forward by your colleagues what is involved so you just attend a couple of meetings a year um you'd attend two of your staff student liaisons so one each each semester and that's the meeting with your school so Mm -hmm. all your course leaders and strategic leads will be at that um and that's where you raise all your school based issues and your course problems um you're also the voice in kind of module situations as well so if there's um rumblings of issues going on on social media about your course um and it's maybe something really small it's up to the rep to approach the lecturer about that um in the university context we run um partnership and action meetings between the union and the university um and that's where the reps will come together and be able to from all schools will come together and they'll be able to discuss the wider issues so um wi-fi for example is one that comes up <laughs> every imagine. single time yeah um obviously you know being a student representative is just like being a student president it's a fantastic thing for your cv going forward what have you and the other officers in RGU Union been doing to increase that interest in stepping up? I think it's it's incredibly difficult. Um, people are generally, there. there's two different people. There's people that are very scared of things like this. And there are also a lot of students who are scared of speaking to the presidents because it seems like such a huge role Mm -hmm. um and the shyer students won't approach us at all Mm -hmm. um and you're not that scary no (laughs) we're not i used to be that shy student so i know exactly how they feel i Mm -hmm. would never have approached a president about anything um and if i saw them around campus i'd be like oh they're important (laughs) um so yeah i was that student but um i think it's just such a difficult thing because if you're not already engaged with the union it's very difficult to understand what we do Mm -hmm. um the societies is the main the main kind of public facing part of the union um but these roles the full-time roles especially are very very different to being as part of a society Mm. um and you'll have to get engaged in things that you will literally know nothing about um so all the quality assurance stuff that i get involved in you wouldn't have a clue um and it really opens your eyes actually and it's the same in every sabbatical role there is something that you think wow I didn't know all of that happened um and for me it was the quality assurance stuff I didn't realize just how rigorous it all was um and that every single course goes through um you know is reviewed every summer Mm -hmm. um including all the modules and it's just I don't think students realize all that happens (laughs) and when you get that you know eye-opening experience it's well it's fantastic experience uh really for going forward but uh, you mentioned earlier the uh, working in partnership that RGU was obviously one of the first institutions to develop a student partnership agreement um, between the university and the union. And you can go across campus and see all of the posters, all of the plasma screens with everything that's been achieved in partnership in quote marks. Um, can you give me a couple of examples of things that um, yourselves have achieved that have had a real impact on student life at RGU? So students will probably know of the change in the academic calendar for the coming academic year. That's probably the biggest change that we've managed to do in a very long time. Mm. Um, That was uh, myself and the previous communication democracy, Edward, that pushed that one through. Um, And I think that has really raised the profile of the union as a whole. Um, I think a lot of people have now stood up and gone, oh, that's what the union does. Mm -hmm. And they can make huge changes if I actually speak up and I want to actually put things forward. Um, I suppose from well-being perspective, um, there's a lot coming soon in the mental health kind of area and the gender-based violence. And although that isn't quite finished and the students won't know about this yet, um, it is coming. And I think that when it 
it does launch probably at the start of next semester it's going to be a pretty big change um to the way that we do things including all the policies mm-hmm. um and you know all the policies procedures have all been changed um updated and new ones created um and all of that kind of stuff so i think that's something that students won't know about yet but it will be a pretty big change and the union has pushed for that for quite a long time as well mm-hmm. and it's finally happening obviously that's next semester as we are very gradually creeping towards the summer months uh we are unfortunately coming towards the end of your time as a student president we are. uh looking back what would you pinpoint as some of your your main standout moments or achievements um i think quite a lot of my role is things that students won't necessarily realize that i've done if that makes much sense Mm -hmm. um i've made um, a lot of changes in the education side so um there is now an online baseline for um all classes uh, all modules to follow um and there's a baseline plus for distance learners um, and that's the way that your modules should be laid out the content that should be on there um and that's a huge step forward um but you probably won't i'm not sure students will quite notice that that's actually changed Mm -hmm. um the other thing is the assessment and feedback work that i did last year um that was a huge piece of work alongside delta and i think it's starting to have quite a big impact. I've heard students saying that this is, I've seen this, but they don't think it's changed until someone says, did you notice that? And they're yeah. like, oh yeah, that wasn't there before. <laughs> um, it's not something, it's it's something quite small that students don't realise, but it, it seems to make a big impact on their experience. So there were seven recommendations that came out of that. Um, and there's a two year, another two years left on that project to um, implement all of them because mm. some of them, are going to take quite a lot from IT, for example, um, quite a lot of uh, IT input from some of them. So yeah, that's probably one of the biggest. I mean, I think it's it's funny looking back because I think the first time I came across you was when I after I started this job it, a couple of months in was the first graduation ceremony that yeah. I dealt with and seeing you get up on stage. What what's that like? Giving Horrible. speech, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you've got the the, the whole student body, graduating student body in front of you and their families the principal, all the senior management team sitting behind you. A few butterflies, I'm expecting, you know, yep. in your stomach. It's horrible. Um, the first time you do it, for me as quite a shy person, it was absolutely awful. Mm-hmm. I hated it. Um, and I was really, in the December graduations, we only do one speech each. So, you know, it's course, quite a yeah. nice kind of, you know, there's less pressure. You've just got the one. Yeah. Um, whereas in summer, I had to do four. So, you know, it was... <laughs> bit more intense um well having sat through them all you you do a very very good job it's really difficult to sit through them actually mm-hmm. once you've been through a few graduations you are kind of like this takes a long time <laughs> um yeah i can imagine a lot yeah. and because you're on the stage you have to make sure that you're looking professional and you you can't be looking bored <laughs> um or anything like Which that you wouldn't anyway no it's no. graduation it's happy but you know after a few of them mm. Is you, especially with the speeches. The speeches is more what I'm talking about because um, you hear the same speeches every day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, they're they're not easy to do, um, and you've just got to do it. And most of it is a blur for me. Like I can't really remember ever doing them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's strange. But we've got one more set of graduations to go. Um, once that's out of the way, um, what's next for Kerry Harrison? Don't really know yet. Um, I'd Good love answer. to. <laughs> Best yeah. Answer. Um, I haven't got anything lined up, but I've got ideas of what I'd like to do. So um, I'd like to stay in the education side of my role, um, possibly get more involved with national work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm already heavily involved with it, but I'd like to somehow stay involved in that. Um, I'd quite like to stay at RGU, I think. Um, I've I've learned a lot about the organisation and how it works. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd like to stay knowing everything that I now know. Um, and I think I would like to go into the education stuff, which isn't something I would ever have considered before this. Mm. It's not really something that a student would know about or a member of the public. It's not It's not kind of a widely known thing. You kind of find out about it inadvertently through yeah. other stuff. Well, 
I mean, you mentioned Edward earlier on, Edward Pollock, former president. He obviously has started working for RGU. So speaking as a member of the staff, it would be fantastic to see you carry on as well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but to close us out today, what's your overall message to the student body at RGU listening into this? It's that your union really does work hard for you. Um, we're not just Freshers Week and we're not just societies and we're not just graduation ball. That's the three main things that I think people associate with the union. Um, your sabbatical officers work extremely hard to do a lot of things that you don't necessarily see directly. Um, and I think it's important that the right people are in the roles so that they can represent you properly at the high level. Well, Kerry Harrison, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. It's all right. Thank you very much. And that's it for this episode of RGU Talk. On behalf of the university, I've been Johnny Milne, and we'll talk to you later. <laughs>